and we're back. Howdy y'all, this is Ethan Monreal playing more Earthbound, and last time we were here we had some plot dropped right on us because we kicked off the game by a meteor crashing right near our house. We learned that Pokey, our neighbor, the dude behind us, is a gigantic asshole and a coward, and we made friends with a bee that promptly saved our life from an alien. That was pretty cool, right? Um, and all during that, I was talking about my life and how ultra-gay despair leads us to do some things that are ultimately futile. But, that's pretty cool, right? We, we had fun. Uh, looks like I got more views on this video than I expected. But anyway, this time around, I'm gonna basically do more of the same, but we're also gonna beat up some nerds and eat some hamburgers out of a trash can, and it will be pretty fun, right? So, to kick things off, let's say hi to our mom and check in. Oh, you're hungry already? Why don't you have some steak? Pokey, you don't like steak, do you? Too bad. <laughs> I like that our mom does not like Pokey. Um, also, if you don't remember from the last part, our, our mom clearly doesn't want us up in this house. Apparently we're annoying or something. Because she just really was eager for us to go on an adventure. But anyway, we need to drop Pokey and Picky off at their parents' house, which is right here. Yo, let's get- oh, ooh, okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> hello. Where in Sam Hill have you boys been? I'll have to think of a suitable punishment. Oh my gosh, she, lo she looks so unfortunate. Um, I'm really sorry that my kids troubled you so much. Both of you are really gonna get it now. Um... Oh, shit. So it's implied there that he just smacked the shit out of him. By the way, I would be happy if you left sometime soon. Okay, I'm tired of your family living next door. We've loaned your father a lot of money. It may have been a hundred thousand dollars or more. Well, I guess it really could have been less, but because of the loan, my family and I now live in poverty. My husband is much too lenient with the children. Oh well, nice guys finish last. That's the story of our life. Um, question mark? Aye! I think it's a dung beetle. I'll smash your guts out. Oh, 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 shit. And just like that, our bee friend died. But before we do that, let's go check in on, uh, Pokey and Picky. How are these nerds doing? What's good? My dad really got after me. He said I get no dessert for the rest of the decade. I don't want to look at the meteorite anymore. <laughs> oh man. And it really bothers me that his mustache and his hair are different colors because what I'm assuming that means is he's a he's a homosexual. So if you didn't watch the Dream Daddy videos, I pointed out that people who have the audacity to have hair a different color than their facial hair or eyebrows tend to be very powerful people that you can't trust. And this this seems about correct with him. We'll see more of him later in the story, actually. He's he's mild. I'd say he's like C tier important. But anyway, let's go ahead and check on our B friend. Uh, uh ugh, I was much weaker than I thought, so you must now begin your adventure. See you Oh shit, wait. I forgot. I need to tell you something. So basically, to defeat Gygus, you must power, or you must combine your own power with that of the Earth's. The Earth will then channel your power and multiply it. There are eight points that you must visit. Make these places your own. Each of these locations is your sanctuary. One of them is near on it. It's called Giant Step. Go there first, and then complete the Triforce. Thank you, thank you, TY, TY. Oh, everything is getting dark. Gasp. Before I pass on, I want to give you something. It's the Soundstone. You need this, basically, to get through the plot, even though you forget you have it a lot. So I don't need to hear that story, because I already know it. And oh, it's already dawn outside, but it doesn't matter to me. I'm fading fast. Ugh. Blech. Well, thank you for my plot item. I'll see you later, bug. Not really, because you're dead, but, you know, that's legit. And so now, basically, we have the reins taken off. We can do whatever the fuck we want. We lost a bug friend, but now we have the freedom we desired. So we are going to murder our way downtown and see what's up with everyone. Also, this is... Onet's theme is actually very cute. I really like this song. 
was being quiet so y'all could listen to it a bit. But anyway, uh, like I said, we have some things to murder, but before we do that, we need to gear up a little bit. So the first thing we're going to get here is the map. Yo, what's good? Hi, kids can borrow maps at this library. Yeah, I totally want one, thank you. And all I have to do is press the V button on my keyboard, because I'm playing on an emulator, spoilers, to see the map, and we can see that we got, I don't know why I'm pointing at the screen, y'all can't see my fucking hand, but we got two food joints, a hotel, a hospital, a shop, and then the path to the next town. We are going to hit up the drugstore so that we can buy a new weapon, and then also we got to hit up this place that's to the left real quick so that we can get an equipable item that we need, so yo, what's good? Ness, I'm doing watch out duty for the hideout. Can you take over? Uh, sure. Yeah, just kidding. Being watch out is my job. Okay, then. So this game has a lot of, like, really pointless dialogue, but that's also part of its charm. You really only get half of the enjoyment of the game if you don't read what the NPCs say. But, um, unlucky for y'all, I want these videos not to be too long, so I'm gonna read everything everyone says. But you will get these guys, because they're pretty interesting. I'll give you my Mr. Baseball cap. You know, I know you've wanted it for a long time. It's the best cap for someone really brave like you. Okay, so we see Ness has a little bit of a reputation here for being a brave lad. And, oh shit, I need to equip this baseball cap. So that gives us an extra... Oh shit, it gives us some offense too, actually. Oh, it's defense. I'm not paying attention. It gives us an extra six defense, which is good, because we're going to need it. I had a dream about you, and you were traveling with a really cute girl. If the dream comes true, say hi to her for me. After all, I am single. So we're in these kids' treehouse, and they all just say these very off-the-wall things. Uh, what's this kid got to say? You've grown since I last, last saw you. You're beginning to look like a man. You're so cool. I, I think I really like you. Well, you know what I mean. Actually, I 100% know what you mean. You know, in retrospect, you ever think back to how fucking gay you were as a child? Um, my homosexuals in the audience, because I... <laughs> I don't know how I didn't see it earlier. I always wanted to basically... I was just like, I don't know why I'm always so interested in these very muscular men that are in all these shows, but like at the same time... I always was obsessed with being, like, the leading women in the shows at the same time. I don't know, I guess I just, I just idolized them, which was the excuse I would use. I mean, not idolize, but I would just say I thought they were cool, but in reality, I just wanted, um, I didn't know what I wanted at the time, but I knew I wanted to be with them. I'm rubbing my chin, you can't see it. Also, in retrospect, man, I really... I mean, this, is, this isn't this is anything that's different from anyone, but man, I had such a gay choice of characters I love to play in video games. I really was obsessed with Candy Kong <laughs> and Donkey Kong, because I was like, holy shit, she is so fucking cool. I just really liked her outfit. Um, and my mom thought that meant I had a crush on her, which was really funny, but in reality it was the opposite. I'm just really gay and I wanted to have that outfit for myself. Um, what else? I played as Dixie Kong a lot, um, and I said it was because she can fly, which was a useful ability, but in reality it's because I just wanted a long-ass ponytail. So, I probably should be talking about this game, so we need to go to the drugstore. Yo, what's good, what's good, what's good? Actually, you know what? I probably don't even got enough money to do anything here. Let me hit up my dad. What's good? Hi. Hi, dad. Oh. Hey, Ness, it's your dad. I deposited $39 into your bank account. Taking away from what you spent, you should now have 69 in the bank. Well, the EXP to get to the next level, Ness needs 15 Well, anyway, did you need anything from me? I do need to save. So... We need to save up about $130 so that we can buy everything we need. So I'm not even going to bother with the shop quite yet. We are going to find some dudes to fight and beat the money out of them. It's never really explained how Ness's dad um, gets the money to transfer to you because it's based proportionately off of how many enemies you fight. So I don't know what the deal with that is, but... Oh shit, these are actually the strong ones. So this is a Yes Man Junior. They have blue hoops, 
and they actually hit pretty hard. But luckily, we actually have our first healing spell, so we are pretty good. I shouldn't even call it a spell, it's a PSI. So, like I said in the previous part, instead of magic in this game, you have PSI, which is basically your brain powers. You shoot some brain juice at things or yourself, and you either do damage or heal, and it's legit. And if I could actually hit things, that'd be pretty nice. So we probably only need to kill two of these. Actually, you don't even really kill them, so at the end of the battle it says they become tame. So this is again part of the plot. Gygus's influence, the bad guy in this game, is making the enemies act a little bit more ornery than they normally would. So when you beat the crap out of them, they basically chill out and they're like, wait a minute, I don't want to be evil no more. The Pogo Punk charged forward. This one also does a lot of damage, but it has a high chance of wasting a turn because it will fall off of its Pogo Stick. Alright, I actually need to heal myself again. Oh, never mind. Oh, well, yeah, I do. That didn't do any damage. So we are gonna shove that trash hamburger in our mouth. Oh, shit, I died. Well, the beginning of this game is pretty brutal. I could have probably not died there if I was being a little bit more patient, but, you know, <laughs> sometimes you just don't. Um, be patient when you're doing Let's Plays. So I am going to go back down there and we are going to go beat the crap out of that dude to get our vengeance. And we need to basically be like at least level 7 or 8 before we do anything substantial. The beginning of this game is like so fucking brutal. I know a lot of kids probably quit playing this game pretty early <laughs> because of this. It is real easy to die. The enemies swarm you. Like, actually, let me talk to this dude. So you want to start a fight or what? Um... They swarm you in groups if you're not careful. They do a lot of damage. Each attack does like a third of your fucking health. And if you run out of PP, which is your basically your mana for this game, you can't heal yourself and you have to find food. But you don't have money unless you kill things, so it can be pretty rough here. Alright, I need to heal this turn. Oh, actually, you already got fucked up. You won! Okay, we leveled up, so that's good. That's actually a pretty good level up to for us. And we got Hypnosis A. So the first quasi-offensive thing we get is actually a status ailment um, called Hypnosis. It just puts enemies to sleep, but I promise you, you only see me use that like once or twice. There, Most enemies have like a 50-50 chance of it working, but as a general rule, like in most RPGs, it is easier just to kill people than it is to actually status affect them. Anyway, I should probably tell y'all what's going on with me. So I am recording this because it is quicker than recording Dream Daddy, and I am like real fucking hungry right now. Like I am, I'm starving. Um, I really need some food in my belly. So I'm gonna record this maybe 15 to 20 minutes, and then after that, I'm gonna go to In and Out and fill my stomach with some fast food because I am, like I said, I'm hungry. I'm ready to eat. Oh yeah, magic butterfly. So you'll find those butterflies flying around on the map, and they basically restore your PP, which lets you, at this point in the game, heal yourself, which I'm a do. There we go. Alright, so, let's see. We probably need to just kill, like, one more, and we should have enough money to do what we need to do, or, like, to, to get the items we want. I also need to make a stop by the pizza place, because... Well, I'll tell you more about that, like, oh, hey, what's good? Oh, actually, it's probably two of them on top of each other, isn't it? Yeah, it is. God damn it. See, this is what I meant by they swarm you. Also, these things have the ability to call other members of their gang to help them, which is really annoying because um, it's very easy for them to just wear you down through attrition. All right, I'm going to heal next turn. Do I have... I still have the hamburger, right? Yeah, I'm going to eat that. Shit, don't kill me, bro. There we go. Alright, our HP's maxed out. But yeah, like I said, I'm gonna get some food. Um, I might read a little bit, I don't know. I'm debating on it. I need to work on some more job applications because I really, <laughs> I really need a job that actually pays anything substantial so that I can move forward with my life, which is, I guess, the major hurdle I'm going through right now is basically I am a homosexual and I need money to just live my life the way I want to live it. 
and <laughs> I can't right now. I get paid. Uh, oh, um, I guess you know. I don't give a fuck. Y'all can know. I get paid like I think 950 right now, um, and per hour. And my job just refuses to give anyone hours. I work retail. Shoutouts to anyone living that retail life. So I make like 45 to maybe a hundred dollars a week usually, um, unless they just abruptly change my schedule, in which case sometimes I end up going from working like 10 hours a week to working like 25, which isn't, that's not, that's not a lot of hours at all, but it's like having no warning between the switches for my schedule is really obnoxious, because it makes it harder to plan things. So, I've been pretty vigorously planning um, to do things to get a new job, and that involves filling out a lot of job applications, but one of the things I've run into is that a lot of my job experience and life experience involves gay shit, and I can't put that on my fucking resumes because discrimination is real, and that really is bumming me out. Because I feel like I'm actually pretty qualified to do a lot of the things I've been applying to, but I know for a fact I've experimented with this. I will just factually get less callbacks if I have all this gay shit on my resume, even if it's for social service. So if y'all don't know, I think I mentioned this last part. My degree is in public administration, so basically I want to do civil service. Uh, in particular, I'm interested in helping low-income people find housing, find and keep housing. But that is kind of hard to get into. That's like, it's a, it would be like amazing if I could work for the City Housing Authority because they have um, tuition forgiveness, which I would love. But it's like, it's just, I don't have the experience and I need it. But in reality, I do have the experience, it's just gay shit, and I'm tilted by that. Because <laughs> I can't I can't fucking use that for anything um, substantial at this point, unless I, like, I apply to some place that's, like, specifically um, for gay stuff. So, the only other options I really practically have are stuff that would be involving public health, involving HIV, because those usually, from my experience, are a little bit better about actually valuing having experience working with LGBT communities. Um, I've mentioned this in my older videos. I In college, I was... Holy shit, that is a lot of people. Oh my fucking god, why are they running to me? I was also lagging the game. There's so many of them on the screen. That's what I was talking about with that swarm and shit. Like, those nerds just come out the woodworks and try to beat the shit out of you. But it is actually time for us to go to the shop, finally, because we, we killed just enough dudes to have enough money in order to upgrade our items. So we are going to walk over to the, not the burger store, the drug store. And we are going to actually save with our dad real quick. He's going to tell us how much money we have. What's good? Hey, Ness, it's your dad. Okay, so we have a total of 178. So we did go a little bit over. And it's saved. Okay. Alright, and we're going to continue. Thank you. So now all we need to do is go to the ATM. And we need to withdraw. And so if you die, you lose half the money you have on you, which is one of the practical purposes of using the ATMs. But um, I usually actually just straight up take out all my money because I'm impatient <laughs> in some ways. And also... Um, after a certain point, the game is fairly easy, but early on, I'm going to not do that, because I really need to keep my money. Because there's a practical chance for me to actually die, like I did earlier. But later on, you, it's pretty hard to die, in my opinion. You just heal yourself for a lot. There we go, cheap bracelet. There we go. Alright, so we got a pretty sizable defense upgrade. Maybe I'll go to 22 or 25 minutes this time for the video. But, like I was saying, I have all this gay shit on my resume. Um, and it's nice, but it don't do nothing for me. I spent a lot of my college doing stuff uh, revolving platonically around activism, and more specifically just around gay stuff in general. And I was part of an LGBT group. I talked about that a lot in my Oracle of Ages and Seasons videos. And I did get some really good-ass experiences in that. I actually do think that helped me um, grow up a lot and learn a lot more about myself and other people. More importantly, I learned that everyone is fucking depressed and everyone makes bad decisions all the time. I mean, I already knew that, but <laughs> it was reasserted to me. 
Hey, wow, these do not do a lot of damage to me anymore. That's actually really good. So it's gonna get a good bit easier to level up once you buy those items. Because you can basically take on multiples at the same time. Which is good that we upgraded before we came here, because there are a lot of these dudes here now. Here we go, get out of here, you nerd. Hmm. I'm actually really surprised um, at the number of views I got on my previous Earthbound video. I think this game is pretty... I don't want to say overdone, but people love playing this game. There are a lot of LPs of it. And a lot of really popular people have done LPs of Earthbound, because it's so... I think it's just a, a good game to LP. There's a lot of witty dialogue, and you can really um, add your own twist to it pretty easily. What, what's good? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? So we're gonna beat the shit out of this dude. But it looks like y'all liked it. I am also got a few messages from people being like, Oh my god, I can relate to this... Um, gay depression stuff where you just get hobbies or start engaging in activities that you ultimately don't succeed at because <laughs> you're depressed. Which, um, I think my experiences in the LGBT group in life have actually taught me a lot about that. I think that I don't actually, let me check my status here real quick. Alright, I need to get at least two more levels before we move on, so we're going to be grinding here for a bit, get into it. Um, I think my experiences in the LGBT group and in life, just in general, have kind of taught me, uh, like, some things to circumvent that, because I don't want to just be like, there's only gay despair in this life. Basically, like, it requires just slowly mastering self-discipline and building connections with people who help bring you into a positive place. Um, like, for me, I, I think I do solid at my hobbies when I can be consistent at them, but it, I have to be doing them for the right reason and not forcing them. So, like, when I force myself to do Let's Plays, I will always eventually burn out, I've realized. Uh, I really just need to do it when I feel like it, which is why I'm doing Earthbound right now, because if I did Dream Daddy, I feel like the commentary would not be very good, because, again, I'm hungry, and also I just don't feel like it right now. Um, you also need to really analyze, like, why you're doing what you're doing, because it's like... Even, even not just with the hobbies, but like with sex and stuff, I realized pretty early on uh, in my college life, and actually even before college and high school, that I would use sex to regulate my mood, <laughs> um, and that that ultimately would just make me feel worse because men are disgusting. And then also, wah wah, uh, I'm gay, but not in the cute way, so um, it's kind of harder for me to get laid. And so when I get rejected, I'm like, I get a little, I got a little bit furious. Now I don't really care that much. Um, for better or worse, I don't care. I've just accepted that's how things are. But when I was younger, it used to really perturb the shit out of me. I was like, why doesn't anyone want to fuck me? This is disgusting. I hate this planet. But now I know, um, for one, other people don't exist to make you feel better about yourself. And to um, ultimately, even getting that will not make you feel better about yourself in the long run. So you're probably wondering why I'm just pacing back and forth in this area grinding. It's because the boss that we need to fight is that dude behind the game counter, so the arcade. But again, I can't fight him yet. But what we can do... Oh, actually, it's not even open yet, I was about to say. Um, you can actually go in this pizza place and have their phone number once you get your wireless phone that you receive later. And you will be able to have them deliver pizza to you wherever you are so that you can have healing items for easy access. I should also probably explore more of the town while I'm grinding because the, the enemies are kind of all over. So let me, let me show you off some things here. So, hey, don't mind me, I just walked in your house. I moved here from way, way away next town. In the town, there is, what is the name? Uh, Polar Star Preschool. The preschool is at Paula's house. Paula uses, uh, what is it called? Um, magic? So that is actually a pretty big hint. Paula, if you don't remember from the intro of the game, is our next party member, and she is a world-renowned psychic prodigy. She actually flat out has psychic powers that are acknowledged. Ness has psychic powers, but he doesn't realize um, his psychic powers until the game starts, but Paula has been having them ever since she was a little baby. Get out of here. 
I actually broke off of my train of thought like four or five times in this conversation, but other than that with the sex stuff, I think that me using activities to moderate my mood in general um, is just a bad habit. It's not a bad habit, it's like a necessary habit, like you gotta do it, because <laughs> ultimately it's like, um, it's very easy to be gay and unhappy, and sometimes you just need something, anything to deal with it. But at the same time, part of growing up is like overcoming that and moving forward with your life and learning when that behavior ends up being toxic. Um, most of my friends, I think, struggle with that a lot. A lot of my friends have sub substance abuse problems, or they just compulsively have sex, or they compulsively date people, or um, they just love to not commit to anything, which isn't bad, but it's like, it ends up making life a lot harder for people. And like I said, really, it just, it comes down to mastering self-discipline and not being afraid of introspection, because I do think a lot of us are, are very, very afraid of being introspective and thinking about why we do the things we do, because we think that if we acknowledge that we're doing something because we're depressed or because it's our gay way of dealing with things, we think that means we're a bad person or we're a failure, but acknowledging it is just part of the struggle, so if you're... Shout out to all my homos struggling with things. Um, feel free, to, feel free to say if you relate to this in the comments or not. I mean, I think some of y'all will, some of y'all probably won't. And that's actually something I've noticed is a pretty big discrepancy between people that causes conflict, is that people who do have this experience of being, like, really depressed and, like, just doing random shit because they're depressed, like, have, like, a really huge gap in experience between themselves and people who do not, and that ends up just generating a lot of conflict when groups of LGBT people congregate. But I'll talk more about that probably in the next episode. I'm going to do one more battle after this, because the video is already almost at 30 minutes. And then I am going to go get my food, because it's 4 and it's about to be rush hour pretty soon, and I really do not want to be stuck. Um, like, in and out is not even, like, in practice five minutes away from where I am, but it is very easy to get stuck in this area for, like, 30 minutes back and forth. So it, it could very well take me an hour to get my food and get back home because of how traffic is here. Because all the roads here are, most of them are still farm-to-market roads, and they just really cannot handle um, the traffic flow here. So if you don't know... Um, I live in a area that is, like, very recently rural that's becoming a suburb right now, and I live in the suburban half, but, like, I also live near people who have cows, so that's, that's pretty cool. I actually really want to actually go on a walk and see them, because I see them just hanging over the fence looking at people, so I'm assuming that, like, people who are going on walks are, like, petting them or giving them, like, food and stuff, and they just seem so friendly, I, I really want to friends with those cows because they're very cute but anyway um like i said the area is just rapidly developing and the roads can't take it so it takes me a long ass time to get food but we're gonna dip in the arcade to tantalize y'all for the next part and i will see y'all later <laughs> oh that was a very abrupt video outro but i need to go get my food so see you nerds later thanks for watching and bye